So Kyle, you finally got Jimmy Garoppolo back, I assume. And here's a guy, he's 27 years old. You've paid him a ton of money. And he's only played 10, he's only got 10 starts. So what have you seen in him this offseason that leads you to believe that he's the answer? Well, we saw it um, when he got his opportunity to play. You know, I, I wish it would have been longer. I um, wish we would have had three years to see that and evaluate it. But we got five games, and then you go into a, a year where he's a free agent, and you got to make a decision going forward, um, especially with some of the other guys that were available. And what Jimmy did in those five games, um, he did show everyone he could play at a very high level in this league. Now, he's got to play more. He's got to get out there. You know, He's done as good as anyone could do in five games. Um, but we know that's not that's not built to last for anyone. He's going to have some ups and downs, but it's going to be our response to it um, that shows how much success we'll have in this league. But the ability is there. He's shown that. We've seen him practice all the time, and we thought we'd be able to go through these ups and downs a little bit more last year, but uh, we only got two and a half games. And, you know, it's crazy because now Nick and CJ have, you know, just as much, if not more, experience than him. So. Nick Mullen and CJ Beathard, his backups now. Yeah, definitely, who are second, you know, going into their second year in the league. So um, they've all have about the same amount of experience and um, we just hope we can keep him healthy this year because he's a very talented player and uh, I know he's going to give us a chance to win. What have you learned in your time now, almost two years now, with Jimmy Garoppolo? Do you feel like you and he are on the same wavelength and you're going to call what he wants and you have that good understanding of each other now? Oh, we got to go through it together. I mean, you can say all you want to practice and stuff, and we feel great there, but you got to go through the grind together, and we haven't been able to do that yet. So um, that goes through um, experience, not just by talking about it, what we say out here. That's going to go through the ups and downs together, going through winning together, losing together, um, going through all those aspects in the season. And I know we will go through that, and the type of guy he is, the type of guy I am, uh, and the talent that he does have, I, I know we'll get there. I'm looking forward to it, but uh, that's always a challenge. You kind of have had an injury riddled camp a bit here. So, have you, did you enter this training camp period basically saying that you wanted to have a physical training camp and these are just the, this is just the byproduct of, yeah, of trying to get ready that way? Enter every training camp thinking it's going to be a physical training camp because it's, it's really one of the only times that you're allowed to do that, that you have the pads on doing that. And it's, it's very tough during the season because guys aren't recovered from that Sunday. Um, usually when you're practicing on Wednesday and Thursday. So if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. So that's always the goal. Um, we've changed a lot up with our reps and how we practice and um, look because we have had bad injuries, not just this year, but every year since we've been here. Um, I think the changes we've made in practice have really helped with the soft tissue things and things like that, how we rep our guys, um, not doing the same amount of reps each day, kind of doing a high day, a low day, and going back and forth. Um, but then when you have guys landing on each other, um, we never tackle in practice, but uh, you know sometimes it's unfortunate. And we've had, had some injuries where not soft tissue stuff, but um, guys that we have lost. You know, we've lost one guy in our um, swing tackle for the year at the Sony long-term one you know we have about 13 guys out right now but um, I think all of those guys except maybe four of them will get back by week one and the rest of those guys we should get back by week two or week three so yeah we have had a lot here in the last five days but um, nothing too catastrophic yet um, except for Sean. So with Bosey your first round pick two of his previous four seasons uh, his last year in high school and then at Ohio State uh, his season ended prematurely with an injury and he went out and got hurt that seems like more of a fluke thing because somebody fell on him. Do you have any concern about Bosa's health long term? I have concern about all your players' health long term. Um, but I think it's a little unfair to the kid that a guy tears a ACL in high school. So about 60% of these guys out there, and you act like he's injury prone over that. And I get what happened to his oblique his last year in college. And I think he made a pretty good decision on what he did. Um, but you look at everything else, and he practiced every day, played every day. Um, he's been that for us since he's been here. He's not a guy who's high maintenance or anything. He's an old school football player. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, we had a guy land on his knee. and. We thought we were going to lose him for the year because of the way it looked and stuff. And I think he is a pretty good healer and stuff. And he was athletic enough to at least get somewhat out of that position. And fortunately, we'll only lose him for about five weeks now. I've been asking a lot of coaches around the league uh, how they're going to handle the new pass interference replay review system. And I had one coach say they may add somebody to the box upstairs to look at that only. And other coaches basically are flatlining it and not making a big deal of it. Do you know where you stand on this yet as you sit here three, four weeks before the season starts? Yeah, I just we're going to do it as well as we can. Um, you know, we have guys up there that are assigned to look at things, but 
um, to make to act like there's gonna be something real different. I mean, you still get the same amount of views. Uh, there's not if you hire a guy to do something specifically, it's not like he gets a special video to look at. Uh, we're all looking at the same thing, and it's usually what the whole stadium sees on the scoreboard. Um, you want to assign someone to it so you don't have 30 voices yelling their opinions at the same time. When yeah. ultimately, I got to make the decision. So it's nice that we do have one guy who really studies it throughout the week, who really understands the rules of the game, how it's written, because it's not, as we all know, it's not what's obvious. It's how it's written that you got to be very good at. So we do assign one guy to that who's going to give his opinion. Ultimately, I have to make it at the end. And so um, he's going to be up in the box during games. Yes, and that's yeah. how it's always been. Uh, so there's going to be. So is there? Is he dedicated then only to that, or does he do all calls? Uh, no, he's dedicated to all calls. Yeah, yeah, right. all all re replay stuff. That's possible yeah. replay. And now we've added pass interference to it. But um, trying to see how it's going to go in the preseason. I wasn't able to challenge any two nights ago. There was one that I really wanted to but it was inside of two minutes where that's not my responsibility and um, they didn't decide to do that. But um, the other ones I saw weren't obvious enough and that's the one thing that I think they have been clear about. It's going to have to be extremely obvious um, to get something overturned or called. So um, that's what I'm trying to look at. Hopefully I'll have some um, situations over the next three games where I can try it out and kind of learn a little bit. And hopefully, unlike the last few most preseasons, that what we learn in preseason helps us so we can do it the same way during the season. Um, but I've also learned that that's not always the case either. You know, sometimes what you do in preseason is over-exaggerated, then it changes once the season starts. Yeah, so last year, it's you know, all this in as a coach. And last year, you hit people with the, with the crown of your helmet in the preseason. It was called whatever, 50-something times, and then the season, they put the flags away. No, that's and that's I learned that the hard way last year because... Um, I learned in the preseason, I was like, oh man, this is kind of out of control. I guess that's how it's going to be. Uh, we open up with Minnesota in week one, who's got two physical safeties who play over the middle. And you put together a certain game plan based off the preseason on how this is going to be officiated. And then it was the exact opposite. So I had to completely change that by week two. Like, all right, let's go back to how it used to be, not how it was wow. in the preseason. So that's stuff that you try to get out of the that's preseason. Really interesting. And yeah. may maybe it'll be that way. Um, but I got to see week one, and I gotta, you got to be ready to adjust. It's. What's so interesting is I have no idea how this is going to work. I, I think it could be meaningless, and it could be a headline every week. Do you have much of a feeling on the interference? Thing? I don't think it'll be as big of a deal as people think because they've made it to where it's got to be so obvious in, in, in two minutes under other people's decision. But when you make it that obvious and it has to be so clear that it's going to be hard to change much. Uh, you're gonna when there's a PI called, um, you're gonna always probably be able to see something on there with touching in jersey or something like that. And if you do that, then you can live with the PI. They won't be able to overturn it. So it's gonna have to be just a blatant bad call um, or miscall call um, to be able to overturn it. And uh, usually th those don't happen a ton. Kyle, good good luck this year. I just want you to know I, I'm picking you for the playoffs, oh, and yeah, I have a playoffs, horrible right. record in uh -huh. my prognostications. Well, then so. I'm not very excited about that. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't know, but good luck. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll change it for you this year. That's good. All right, well, I appreciate it, Peter. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.